Projections. It's Tuesday, September 28th, 21. We're here once again, gathered together seeking God with a desire to begin our day well and prayerfully be in a better position today than we were yesterday and a better position tomorrow than we are today. We are working at our relationship with God and there is a benefit and a reward. So let's get started. On Sunday, we spoke of how to do worship service. And part of doing worship service is making room for God and seeing those gifts of the Spirit used appropriately as we gather together. But as we moved from chapter 12 in 1 Corinthians to chapter 13, we found that what we are truly being encouraged in was to seek even greater gifts. As greater gifts are revealed to be faith, hope, and love. We focused on love because without love, we can't accomplish anything. But let's not forget faith and hope. Faith, our trust in God, helps us in our day to day, helps us navigate through, helps us to to trust in him when we can't trust in anyone else. Spoke of that yesterday. We believe. We believe in God's word. We believe in God's promises. Which leads us to hope. And hope is that anticipation. What we look forward to. Part of God's promise, but out on the horizon. We all need hope. To know whatever we're going through today, that in a time coming soon, things will be better. The beautiful thing about being in relationship with God is not only do we believe that things will be better? But we look even a little bit further into the distance and we look to Jesus' return and towards eternity. And that, my friends, is what we call blessed hope. And that is one of the core doctrine of the Assemblies of God is faith in everything that God speaks, especially when he says there'll come a time when he comes and returns and takes us with him. 13. The Blessed Hope. The resurrection of those who have fallen asleep in Christ and their translation together with those who are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord is the imminent and blessed hope of the church. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17, Romans 8, 23, Titus 2, 13, 1 Corinthians 15, 51 and 52 your scripture references to look at and enjoy as you build your blessed hope. I think we all understand the importance of hope. That what we, we persevere, what we, what we, the challenges that we face, the broken hardness, the, the, 
struggle. That there'll come a time when those are no longer with us. Because if we were to, to be charged with struggling through this life day in, day out, trusting in the Lord, without that promise of something better on the horizon, it would make this time much more difficult. And God knows that. And that's why hope and always looking to the horizon is important for our sake and for the sake of those that we could reach. Without hope, we certainly are our impulse would be to bar the doors and just ride out the storm, embrace ourselves. With hope, we move into the world by faith, trusting that God has something better for us, has something better for our neighbors. So when we turn to Scripture, I want to certainly uh, give a nod to the generations before that helped develop the doctrine of the assembly of God and look towards a passage of scripture that is referenced here. And that's in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. If you remember from previous conversations about the church in Thessalonica, through poor teaching and perhaps outside influence and just not being aware, the church of Thessalonica thought that Jesus had already returned and that they had missed the bus. So Paul's letters to the church of Thessalonica are to encourage them forward and let them know that they have not missed the bus and they won't miss the bus as long as they continue to operate in faith and trust in God and continue to look to the horizon. So that's where we get a pretty nice picture of what it will look like on the day that Jesus returns. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Our hope looking to the horizon, easing our burden of today and giving us something to look forward to for tomorrow. I want to throw in a couple of other scriptures that were not referenced as part of the, uh, what was listed there under the core doctrine, which you would find on the AG website. They just bring comfort to me because they're part of the gospel message and they're part of what we shared when we were studying the gospel. But it brings me comfort not only to hear God's word through Paul as he shares the gospel with the, the first generation churches, but if we go back and listen to Jesus echo these same words that there's a foundation of everything that Paul shares, and that is in his relationship with God through Jesus. And that these, these words that Paul are speaking are well-rooted in the same message that Jesus was sharing. So starting in Matthew 24, 30, is Jesus is, is 
also sharing the in times, the what what will kick off that time and that same thing that was just referenced by Paul to the church in Thessalonica. Then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then all the people of earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with loud trumpet calls, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heavens to the other. You see how beautiful God's word is? And how it knits together this greater picture. That's what God wants for you. His word is so intricate. So I encourage you to seek him, not only in the passages that are provided in the study of the Assembly of God doctrine, but also to delve deeper. What did Jesus say about his return? What did Jesus say that inspired his disciples to have hope? This leads me to perhaps my, my favorite encouragement that Jesus provides, and that's in the Gospel of John. As he is trying to console while informing his disciples so that they can be encouraged to continue to look to the horizon no matter what they face in the coming years. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. Jesus is consoling a, a, a group of, of disciples that have faithfully followed him for many years. It's consoling them that there's going to be a time and a time very soon that they're going to have to minister without him physically present. To them, that sounds impossible. Now, Jesus is well aware that he is leaving the earth, but that doesn't mean he's leaving relationship. He'll still be interceding for them. He also knows that the Holy Spirit will be sent to empower them and instruct them. But he knows that that's all very difficult for them to comprehend. God says, trust me, have faith that everything that I speak is true, and I give you a little bit of a hint, a peek at the future, and how beautiful it is, I leave you hope. And that's the gift that God desires to give each and every one of us each and every day. It's not just the strength and the courage to get through today, but something to look forward to for tomorrow. Something greater than we have ever experienced. Something well worth the wait. 
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. The days can be hard. You know this. Father, there are days when the crushing weight of the world is almost more than we can bear. We're so grateful, Lord, that you are at our side and help us navigate through the most difficult times. Thank you, Lord, for hope. Something on the horizon to look forward to. It makes today worthwhile. It makes the burdens lighter. And it keeps us moving forward. Lord, we pray for, for all of our brothers and sisters that you would renew their hope today that you would refresh them and help their eyes have been downcast, refocus on the horizon and you're coming. You're coming soon. You're encouraging each of us to forward to finish strong. We can't accomplish this on our own, Lord, but we know through you when it seems hopeless that you are still on the throne and your plan continues to move forward. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Have hope. I'll see you back here tomorrow morning. God willing. I'll do it all over again. Know that I love you and I miss you. Till we see each other again. Be good.